Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grip Lock Foundation Disc Golf Weekly Podcast. I'm Hunter, joined as always by Trevor What's and up? Connor. Hey, um, don't worry. Old Gray back here is not here to stay. If you're watching, if you're listening, you didn't notice any different. If you're watching, we're in, still in the process of moving. Um, and so yeah. we have the podcast set up front. We just haven't screwed it into said wall because we have to cut a receptacle yeah. out of the middle of it. And we have a punishment live stream today. You we know, got a whole big thing. So we just that, had to kind of send it. I mean, absolutely nothing. For and Hunter took my away day. my visual privileges. Well, yeah. Connor, well, we know. Okay. Well, the real yeah, reason, Hunter, the real Hunter? reason, listen, the real reason that Connor's not on camera today is because he fell into a giant vat of dye. And so he's currently blue and naked. Yep. And well, so we that part was, is pretty And normal. a big fat liar. Yes, that Did is it, a like good movie. The movie. Big Fat Liar, where he's blue. That's correct. Yeah. I thought that was uh, nope. Keep keep going. Before we get into <laughs> today's show, or well, first of all, we're gonna talk a little college nationals. Discmania has announced they're moving the distrib- distribution to Emporia. Um, we got a fun Trevor's trivia ahead. Uh, talk about a little A tier. React to some pro NBA counterparts, and then talk through our top ten to finish out the show. Before we get into all of that, I gotta thank our sponsor of today's episode. Many disc golfers have tons of extra discs cluttering up their closets and cars, and there are very few storage product products on the market that are designed specifically for golf discs that don't waste any space. And unfortunately, the ones that do exist are terribly expensive. Thankfully, there is DiscBox. DiscBox is the only low-cost disc golf storage product on the market. It is a simple disc storage bin that holds up to 30 discs, requires no tape or glue, and is made from recycled material in the USA. Go to discboxdg.com and you will find quantity discounts, wholesale options, multiple colors, and most importantly, no order minimum. So you can order just a single box if you want. Discbox also makes a great players pack item. Visit discboxdg.com today and get your collection organized. Use code FOUNDATION for 15% off your order. I like those boxes. They're nice. They're a good time. There's my endorsement. I think they're nice. I have one at home. Yeah, I have a few. They're very, they're very fun. Good time. Yeah. Um. So this past weekend, College Disc Golf National Championship went down sure in uh, South Carolina, Rock Hill, um, off to Winthrop, if you will. Do you feel responsible for what we did to Clayton? Uh, partially. Okay, I do too. Yeah. So Clayton Lewis. Um, oh no. He works for us. Thousand rated. Our golden, he's our golden standard. He's the best dis, He's the best putter um, foundation has ever seen, probably. He's phenomenal. He's disgusting. Um, and in the retail store, we had a Zuka cart. And so we had told him, he like said something about like wanting it, what would he have to do, blah, blah, blah. And I told him, if it didn't sell by the time you went to Nationals, you can have the Zuka cart. The only caveat is you have to use it at Nationals. Yeah. Didn't sell by the time he went to Nationals. As far as we're aware, he took it. Um, So I'm assuming he used it. Did not perform at Nationals the way he would have wanted or would have been expected. Um, And I do feel personally responsible. I mean, I think he was like the ninth ranked player in the country when he took like 40th. Well, I wasn't going to say anything, but yeah, it wasn't great. I'm going to say it. He didn't play good. He didn't play good. He just had an off round. But the problem with college disc golf. You get one round. Is you get one round. You have one shot and you mess up. That's it. Then you you either you have to be in the top I think sixteen yeah to get to the finals, that's it or top twenty one. Did you have a good day or not? Yeah, if you have one good round, you're good. If you didn't, you're screwed. That being said, said the kid who won this year did like have a chance to win last year as well. He's pretty good. Yeah, so let's just go ahead and talk singles while we're talking about it. Uh, Benjamin Zorn of Ferris State University took it down. You had Ilkin Grow of University of Cincinnati, who's probably the favorite, coming yeah, second. Definitely. And then you had Benjamin Wagner of Milligan University come in third. Um, Benji in his, uh, Benji's what he's referred to a lot. It's his uh, Instagram username. In his acceptance speech, called us out. Yeah, he did. Um, and I had to go back and look at why. Yeah. And it's because last year he was in contention. We were down at Nationals. He was in contention. And then he took a 10 last year during the finals. And when we were recapping, we just said, well, Benji was in it. And then I said, and then he slowed up a little bit. And Trevor goes, he didn't slow up. He, he just pumped the brakes completely. He took a 10. And then we said, yeah. And then we went on. And apparently that stuck with him. And he used it as motivation. Dang. I will take it. And uh, he, told us, he told us to suck it. And you know what? He's right. He has the he has the ability to say that he's yes, a sir. national champ. He I won. will take a portion of your future proceeds in the sport of disc golf because my motivation. Do how much of this national championship do you think we can have? Like, 
how much what percentage are we national champions right now mm, i would say that you're probably like four percent i'm probably like seven percent so a total of 11 11 11 national, national champions i'm fine with should that. we hang that a banner we should probably put a banner put, probably put a banner yeah. out we got some good spots we got that. some great spots 11 percent national champions you can probably hear the spots we got a great a great area for yeah, it. Can i have up. like 0.7 yeah Okay. Yeah, you, 11, yeah, 11.7. 11. 11. We'll give Salas 0.3, make it make nice, it 12. even 12. Yeah, 4 12% okay. national Sweet. champs here. Yeah. Percentage for every month. All right, there That's we go. Good. Um, but no, real talk, he played He played great golf, um, and he was up by two going into the finals, and then um, on the guy that he ended up beating, he was down by two, caught him, beat him by three in the finals. That's so, wild. Uh, I believe they played, yeah, they played the lakefront, which was normal Winthrop gold, I believe for both the round one and for the final. So in singles, that's how that went down. Uh, on the women's side, you had Kelly White from UNC taking it down over Genesis Beck from NC State. And then Atlanta Kruger came in third from Emporia State there. Um, doesn't seem like there was a ton of drama. Uh, it was a pretty close, though. Neck and neck match there. Um, Kelly ended up winning by one stroke. So on the team side, how college disc golf works, which this is really fun, is basically you have the round of singles. You take all four scores. There's four players on a team. You average the score together. Boom. That's that round. And then collegiate doubles. You split the team into two pairs and you play alternate shot. So you're playing best shot with your doubles partner. And then the other team chooses the best lie and throws from there. So four guys playing alt shot or girls playing alt shot. Girls actually are just two. Um, but UNC Charlotte completes what I believe was an undefeated season, capping it off in a playoff with the national title so unc charlotte took it down they actually hit like a 60 footer you can find footage of it Dude, on instagram yeah, it to insane. send it to the playoff with last year's champion unc or university of cincinnati sorry university of cincinnati who won last year made it to the playoff this year but ended up losing in the playoff and then nc state came in third so yeah shout out to unc charlotte i mean that undefeated season is insane yeah it's wild stuff and they were they were the favorites and they got it done um on d1 women's team you had liberty university winning by two over clemson coming in second and then emporia state came in third where did the emporia men's team finish did you mention i didn't mention i don't know they were pretty far down they weren't pretty far down i mean it was it was a competitive nationals this year Dang. um it, it, emporia came in fifth they lost by five strokes okay it's getting really tough to win it's getting very tough to win um, D2 men's, uh, you had UNC, just normal UNC taking it down and also in a playoff over University of Dayton. And then UNC Charlotte came in third, tied with Iowa State. And yeah. then the D3 men's team, we had one of our employees, Kyle Sennett, was a part of this. What up? Uh, wow. Liberty University D3 took it down. Shout Heck out to that yeah. whole team. But Kyle, we now have to refer to him as Sir Champ. Sir Champ. Sir Champ. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir, yes, champ. sir champ. Um, I, I, NC State came in second there. UNC Charlotte came in third there. I got to so. say, I think that the um, they need to figure out how to get another round in there because two rounds of singles with three rounds of doubles would be like perfect. perfect. Well, that's what it used to be. But one round of singles <laughs> is, is, is whack. It's whack for the yeah. team scores and it's whack for the individual Well, it's more scores. whack for the individual. The team, I understand, because they're trying to make it a team sport. Yeah, but it's but the same, also it's same concept as like you could be a decent team and one singles round can ruin your whole tournament. But with the average, it's very hard for one, for singles to ruin it. It's a lot harder. It is harder, yeah. But it, it used still to be happens. so back in, back in my day, you <laughs> just took all four scores, added it together, just and that was your score. Up. So instead, if you lost four strokes yeah. to a team back then, you lost four strokes. Nowadays, you'd only lost one. Uh, but then they also at one point had four, and you drop a third. The average is the best to like make it be truly team. But what I didn't like this year was singles of the first round. So that just opened opened it up. You come out the gates cold, and if you don't yeah. get off to the start you want, your chance at winning a single national title or becoming an All-American's out the window. Yeah, it should go doubles, singles, doubles, doubles, probably, or well, even what doubles, it, so doubles, singles, doubles. What they like used that. to do is it started on Wednesday afternoon, you played doubles, and then Thursday you played two rounds of singles. Yeah. And so it went singles, singles. So then Friday, Saturday, you had two more rounds of doubles to finish it out. So that's how it used that's to better. go. I like that format. Because then too. you have one round of doubles to kind of like get into the flow of things, yeah. shake the rust off, then two rounds of singles, and then you go doubles, doubles. Yep. Um, and then what they would do is I think Friday night was the singles finale, which worked out. But no, I definitely think that for college, because like as a player, becoming an All-American or having a chance at winning an individual title, like... That's a really big deal for a it, collegiate player. Yeah, it, it and so for it to come down to one round, that's how it was our senior year. It came yeah. down to one round. And it just it's not as fair. If it's, if you're a college player that's good, 
and it's impossible not to do this, but you have to almost check yourself out a little bit and yeah. be like, I'm trying to play for the team title because that's really the one. The other one, it's listen, and the guy who won it deserved it, but it's gimmicky, right? You play yeah. one round and then a half a round. That's that's a, if we did as they did on the pro tour, nobody would consider that a real win. Everybody would say that was that was super gimmicky, like that's not a real win. Well, tournament. I mean, look at how many times you have the first round hot round exactly. not go on to win. Exactly. So that that's the that, if I think if they added two rounds and then a final like thirteen though, that would be that would be good That'd enough. Be perfect. That'd be good yeah. enough. Uh, so the big news in disc golf kind of this past week was it came out, it was sent out to retailers, but then it got posted all over social media. I'm actually going to be reading, I hadn't seen this email, but it was posted to Reddit, um, which was that Dynamic, or well, Dynamic Discs, but House of Discs is bringing Discmania to Emporia for their distribution. So what does that all look like? Disc we'll talk about here. The world. So this was the email that was uh, apparently sent out here. This is from Reddit says, hello, friends. The one constant in life you can count on is change. We've gone through our fair share of changes over the years at Discmania. This includes major shifts such as where we call home all the way to where our district are produced. At the core of these changes, there's remained one constant, a deep love of the game. As mm. we turn the page on this to this next chapter, we will do so with the same unwavering love for the game. On behalf of everyone in, here in Wellington at Discmania USA, we thank you for many great years and look forward to the years to come. From California to Colorado and now Emporia, ever onward and upward. For more information on this new chapter, please see below for our message from David Hine, House of Discs, North America General Manager. Sincerely, Dana Vici, Discmania USA Sales Manager and Discmaniac for Life. Key updates, new shipping location, wholesale orders and products for Discmania will be shipped from Emporia, Kansas. Unified ordering platform. As a customer of DiscGolfDistribution.com, you can now you now have the convenience of ordering products from multiple brands, including Discmania, Westside, Castaplast, Dynamic Disc, Latitude 64, and Hand Eye Supply Co., all from one location and one website. Transition period. The transition to the new shipping location and unified ordering platform will take place gradually between early April through May. Discmania products will soon be available for purchase on both sites. Keep an eye on the Disc Golf Distribution newsletters collaboration with teams we encourage you to continue working closely with our dedicated sales and customer service teams to ensure that we maintain a high level of service you've come to expect from Discmania. we believe that this consolidation will not only simplify your ordering process but also contribute to a more efficient and seamless experience we greatly appreciate your partnership and cooperation during this transition should you have any questions yada 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 um i'm not going to put that information out there Thanks for being a part of Discmania family. We look forward to providing you with improved and unified ordering experience. Sincerely, David Hine. There you go. Um, so I reached out to Dana. More plastic and Emporia. I reached out to Dana on Twitter because I, what that didn't address is like, what's happening with Discmania USA like right. in Colorado? Yeah. And so I just asked him basically like, hey, can you sh op shed any light on like, what's the plan for the Colorado branch? And so... He responded and said, all right, a portion of our staff will transition to working for House of Discs. A portion will continue on in Colorado for Discmania and a portion will no longer work for Discmania or House of Disc. So Pretty they diplomatic. are keeping their, their Colorado branch. Um, what that Colorado branch will be used for, I'm not 100% positive. Like, yeah, is it just like offices at that I point? I would assume because yeah. distribution is moving to Emporia. So it seems like right. a portion of their staff is moving to Emporia to work there. Um, the portion that's no longer it's obviously not clear was that like layoffs or were those people who were offered positions in Emporia and turned them down yeah. or what exactly happened there I'm sure there were um, some layoffs but anyways well you it, it makes sense in this type of a transition for there to be some because well, you're right. moving into like the whole There's point of this infrastructure is in to Emporia. cut costs <laughs> right. and you already have infrastructure and order fulfillment teams stamping right. teams all that in place which would make like that's kind of the whole feels like the whole reason behind it but what are your yeah. thoughts now you know, before House of Disc kind of owned them, left everything as it is. Now they've brought Castaplast first under this disc golf distribution, and now they're bringing in Discmania. Thoughts on this consolidation? Uh, I think that they're just really completing what you, when you are being like a, a big brand owner and you are like um, a parent company, like they're kind of functioning. Uh, this is just kind of what you do, right? It's like if you're Kraft Foods and you own all these different individual brands, you're still going to utilize your infrastructure as one big unit that can move all these individual brands and market them on their own. So 
I think that we're going to continue to see the same marketing strategies where they're being marketing as their own brands, but on the back end side, because like this is back end stuff at the end of the day, like it's, it, it happened to become public info and, and it is what it is. But like at the end of the day, um, from a brand standpoint, this doesn't change their strategy at all. This is just a culmination of what they were going to do eventually because it makes the most sense for them. Uh, I'm a little bummed out if some people lost their jobs. You never want to see that happen. Uh, and I do also, I'm a little bummed out for anybody that had to move from awesome Cal Colorado to Emporia. I keep talking about Emporia that way. I don't really mean to be mean, but like, I think most people, cause we're, were they near Denver? Like what, or Boulder? Uh, Are they in Wellington? Wellington. Where's Wellington? Let's look it up. Let me get a little info on where Wellington is. Cause if it looks like it's absolutely delightful place in Colorado, I mean, people you, you typically love Colorado. Colorado is like a pretty maps cool here. place. That's what I'm saying. And so like, Wellington's here. It's near Fort Collins, which I think is pretty big in Colorado. Um, it's yeah, it's just outside Boulder. Okay, it's probably like thirty minutes from Boulder. Well, anyway, maybe an even hour. If, even regardless of the geography, if you had to, if people had to relocate their families or whatever, like that's a bummer. But uh, yeah, I think it's this an is, hour outside of Denver. I think this is just like a this is a company move. You know, they bought this company. Um, they're gonna do what they're gonna do with it, and I I think it's good of them to even keep people on and try to keep some people in Colorado. They could have blown the whole thing up if they wanted to. Um, so yeah, I. House of Discs, man, they are they are in serious, serious, and what it's going to be very interesting to see. You know, they've bought up a lot of these disc golf brands, and so far, um, they've bought brands that were in weaker positions, and that makes you believe that, like, you know, Disc Mania was a once, and I still love Disc Mania, but they were a once very big established company. Disc were manufactured by Innova. They never got past that hump, but that's what they were. They got into a bit of a weaker position. They got swallowed up. You know, Castaplast was a smaller brand. They might have been looking for just a way to move up a little bit, but they kind of got swallowed up. I wonder if in the future, what kind of, like, what larger companies that we think of now as, like, they're big, they're on their own, could find themselves in a weaker position and then get swallowed up? Like, is there a day where a big company, one of the big ones that we talk about, get pushed in an Innova or a Discraft find themselves getting eaten up by the the venture capitalist money like I don't know like have a parent company personally I don't I don't know about those ones because they have a lot of history behind them but it's just interesting to think about like they are they're becoming a huge force in disc golf I mean yeah. they're gonna they're gonna own half the market share they probably they own more than half the probably at this point yeah the um I mean, this from a business standpoint, it makes perfect sense. Um, I am kind of surprised that there wasn't like in that email. Now there could have been because I, I don't receive those emails for foundation. So like I haven't seen the email that came to foundation about the update. I just saw it on there. It was like one thing was tweeted out. Uh, I know birdie disc golf, like posted on Facebook, a like screenshot of it. And then this was on Reddit, the like full, I'm assuming that was the email that was sent out to everyone. So what I'm surprised is that like in there, there wasn't a like some type of NDA or like it wasn't supposed to be leaked because yeah. like they didn't do a press release because as a fan, you don't like seeing this to me at least. No, like I said, it, like it, when stuff starts to feel more and more corporate than like a lot of like the grassroots, like you support a company like a, like right now, like the, the support for like a mint discs right yeah. it's like you have pride in like finding a company like that before they get bigger no there are definitely and people so, in colorado or like that are attached there's a lot of those disc golf fans that are very much grassroots keep business out of disc golf like that yeah. sort of thing and people that might just be colorado natives that like this move will probably lose them more fans than it obviously would gain them for yeah, sure because yeah because to me then like if this move happens behind the scenes your everyday fan which still your everyday casual fan has no idea this happened right right but like it could have been a, a big chunk of the market had no idea this happened yeah um and from the retail business side this is great i mean because it, you, it's you can, more convenient you can order from all the same website the to be honest with you the the disc golf distribution i used to order again i don't do our ordering anymore but when i did for like dynamic and stuff it was one of the smoothest processes not that disc manias was bad theirs wasn't by any means the big move that i was super excited about was when castaplast did this yeah. because castaplast was hard to order from before now it's tough to get an account with um but now so like from the business standpoint all makes perfect sense and honestly is a really good move well the flip side of the but, coin right is like now that the distribution is more convenient and easier and maybe they'll be able to get stock better like who knows um maybe their disc will be on more people's shelves and that maybe they'll gain more fans yeah. that way. That's the flip side. I well, guess. the, um, the other thing that I think some people were worried about is like the plastic change, like for, for cast of plastic, that was a big worry because like 
Discmania had already went through multiple different iterations, right? You had the yeah. like it's made by Innova, then they launched the Active line and the um, Evolution line. Evolution line, and so their plastics already kind of all over the place. Then they stopped being made by Innova, then they launched their own C line. So like, you don't have this like feel that you can just always feel and know this is Discmania. Over time, that'll build again. Castaplast, you do. Yeah, and that was a big one when Castaplast got bought out and like moved under that House of Disc. That of I was brand. I was worried about is like, is this going to just turn into trilogy? And props to them, it hasn't. Well, it's crazy. Um, what is crazy is there are so few companies left that have built their brand on a plastic blend. I would say like Clash is one of the few left um, now. One of the smaller brands that is. Obviously, there's your big ones, your MVPs, your Discraft, and your Innovas. Um, but yeah, like Clash is one of the few ones now that's like come onto the market and is kind of making a name for themselves with their plastic and actually they're kind of making a name for themselves with some of the innovative things they're trying to do with their yeah, plastic like with the, the tone. tone stuff yeah but yeah I, I don't know yeah i i don't I, you're right i think it's it's odd that it got pushed out um it's once again just like proves that any here's the problem though if you have if you did have layoffs NDA or not, there's a very higher chance of stuff like that getting. It out. would it would get out, but I'm saying yeah. it would have it would have leaked out a lot slower right. in like bits and pieces from here and there, versus like this all happens at once. It's one big news event, and like everyone knows. Yeah. Um, but oh, the other thing I was gonna say is what I found out recently that I thought was fascinating is apparently something similar to this happened in skateboarding. I remember I think I talked you about this on the mailbag a little bit, yeah. Because I walked into my, the coffee shop that my brother owns. My brother's just getting back into skateboarding, and he just had a he had a new almost board, and he pulled it out. And so we were like talking about it because I was like, a big almost fan back in the day. I, was like, I remember yeah. almost from because like Rodney Mullins, that his name. Rodney founded, Mullins is a the founder. He's founded almost. So um, is it almost that he founded? I'm almost positive. <laughs> look look it up. I'll and make Google, sure. I'll Google real quick. I don't know, guys. Ro- Rodney Mullins is like the founder of the flip tricks. He's the one who like invented the kickflip. Um, I don't remember. He's American. You consider blah blah blah. I mean, he's tied to almost. Is he? Uh, I don't know if he's the founder of it because he didn't always skate almost. Almost skateboard founded by professional skateboarder Rodney Mullen. Oh heck yeah! Yeah, nice so hunt. he founded almost, uh, but then. As it grew, he sold it to a parent company similar to House of Discs that owns apparently Zeros, a part of it, almost a bunch okay. of a bunch of different brands that you knew. Um, and now almost is closing, yeah. apparently. And oh. so that's why my brother bought a board is because he's a big Rodney Mullins fan and like he was like, Well, I want to get one before they close. That's sick. But what had happened was basically like this company came in, consolidated a bunch of them, all the owners, you know, got their money. But then they don't have the same feel of like before well, it was Rodney mm. Mullins like founded this company. It was grassroots. You're supporting him, the father of like modern skateboarding, blah, blah, blah. Parent company comes in and then, you know, s- some of the brands started to become unpopular and they have to choose why are we spending marketing money on X, Y, and Z. And next thing you know, almost is closing. Wow. Almost you, almost gone. You bring <laughs> up an interesting and so point though. That could be an interesting thing of like as they consolidate more and more at some point does it make sense to have west side at some point right. does it make sense to have cast so Plast? here's the kicker so this is a new having a parent brand entity in disc golf is much newer to the sport so before the business model of i'm creating a disc golf brand was of course i want to create this brand that turns into a it's a company and then it become it's its own thing right now all of a sudden there's this idea that if i jump out the gates with a brand that is super hot and people love the discs i could just get bought out by a house of discs and then house of discs might buy me and say well we don't really want to have too many brands but this one is really good west side goes like that is now all of a sudden and if more of those start to jump in you could have these pools of disc golf coming. there are disc golfers that are shuddering at what i'm saying right now <laughs> but like that that's what could happen is like that all of a sudden becomes an idea because if i'm house of discs and i buy disc golf companies and next year this company starts and they're making these discs that people are just loving and they love uh, the way, the innovative ways that they've uh, designed them and everything i'm like i want to buy that company i'm going to buy them while they're still young they're now me like yeah. that's now a, a a part of disc golf that could be <laughs> that could be happening and it wasn't here before like that was never part of anybody's plan yeah so it's very interesting just to kind of keep a pulse on and keep a finger on like where cuz like are there downsides to it absolutely but are there upsides to it yeah, absolutely as well because one of the like upsides as far as you know the because some people don't like when stuff starts going corporate right but one of the things is that 
you know, just black and white good is the venture capitalist company sees enough value in disc golf to be like, no, it's worth our time, energy, and we're putting our money where our mouth is and like right. investing heavily in the disc golf. Right. You know, at least like that's a good thing. Now, what they do after that, that's up to you, like personally, if you want to support these brands or not. Because like again, a lot of disc golfers are like grassroots love and like those comp- those people might fall more because like even as a company gets too big, like a MVP's blown up. People don't like gyronauts. Some are still just loving that everyone's throwing what they're throwing. Yeah. But there's also a collection that's like isn't as interested in it because they liked it back when it was a smaller thing. And so n- now yeah. people are loving. You'll find this mindset with people who love Gateway, people who love Lone Star, people who yeah. love Mint. Is it like you like feeling a part of like a sub community? And when that sub community blows up then it doesn't feel as close. Well, here's the thing too. You know, think about how all the other in, other industries work. And we're already seeing this in disc golf where there's a lot of more a lot more companies uh, dabbling overseas with their plastic manufacturing. We are right now in a day where a lot of our plastic is still made in this country or you know, the European countries at least and they, you know they enjoy it there uh, domestically. But like that might not always be the case. There, there could, there could be a day where Innova Disc Golf is like the is the some of the pride of disc golf because it costs a little bit more, but it's still made in the USA. Where a lot of our other plastic, like a lot of new companies are going to come in and they're going to source it elsewhere. They're going to source it overseas, and so like, yeah, it's just that's just the way that the the tide is moving. I mean, it's it's a slow move, but which would be yeah. that that would be kind of cool to be able to say like eventually one day whenever it is like that, be like I've got an all American made bag. Yeah. That's kind of fun. Yeah, well, say the, that. The thing with disc golf is like when it comes to a disc, you can't really undercut it that heavily. Right now, yeah, because like where that's big is in a well, you can only con- undercut it with labor. Correct. Well, no, I'm saying I'm saying the end product, like the most expensive disc on the market, stock like premium disc is twenty five bucks. Mm-hmm. Like the most you can undercut that is like, you you could go to twelve, but mm-hmm. then at twelve, like you still have premium plastic made in the U.S. for fifteen dollars. Right. Mm-hmm. So if like Active Line is made overseas, Prodigy's Ace Line is made overseas, and they're still selling their premium plastic for like ten bucks. The top mm-hmm. line disc, like it's only five dollars separately. Right? Yeah. But now if the cheapest American made premium plastic is like thirty, yeah, and you're able to get a disc for twelve, okay, yeah. now mm-hmm. that's a why every company's going to go to twelve. Because like you, yeah. you got to be competitive, but as long as that margin's close, then I don't see that. I don't right. see that being on discraft or end of his radar. Plastic I think prices go up though. I think one of like the fears that could be involved with like a company that you really love, like a disc, like a disc company that going more corporate and being a part of something bigger like that is that you kind of feel like something that you're passionate about and something that you love maybe isn't being appreciated by the big that big corporate company yeah. as much yeah. because you know the people that were running it before were so passionate about right. those discs being like a work of art that people love well, throwing. they can they can lose like sight yeah. of what the original brand mm-hmm. image was but the, sure. i mean the way that you combat that is the i mean it'd be in in a corporate company's interest to still keep those people no involved. the key the is the that, so yeah it 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 doesn't mean that all of that's going to be ruined. No, absolutely not. Because, like, Dana Vici is still heavily involved. And like yeah, and which you, means that there still will be that yeah, in there. Because, like, you, um, in one of the books I was just reading, it's talk, and actually this is in a lot of, like, founder books, it talks about there is a period where Apple, right, Steve Jobs and, um, what's the other guy's name, Wojciak, whatever, Steve Jobs starts Apple. Grows it, grows it, grows it, grows it, grows it. The board, I believe it was the board of directors, gets rid of him. And mm-hmm. then Apple goes through this huge decline because what pe- what they failed to realize was like a lot of people who worked there, a lot of people who believed in Apple and bought Apple, they weren't buying Apple to buy Apple. They were buying Apple because they believed in Steve Jobs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, people didn't even realize that. It's just yeah. he was such a visionary and like the way he talked and led people, like the people at the company weren't as productive when he was gone the people Mm -hmm. didn't want to there are people to this day that don't buy because tim cook is there now instead of instead of steve they weren't as so but what happened was that was a period apple starts flying downward and then the board like kind of freaked out a little bit brought steve jobs back in and instantly turned it back around because apple wasn't the like apple was making the product but people were buying the vision of steve jobs mm-hmm. what time that's very similar that in like that, do you know no i don't remember okay i'm just curious but that's but that's similar to a lot of disc golf companies is like people get it's hard to meet a founder of a company right and like hear their pa- like we went we went to gateway 
Mm-hmm. We met Dave McCormick. Yeah. It is hard to sit there and talk with him, regardless of what you feel about Gateways Plastic. It's hard to have him like passionately tell you why they do things the way they do and not pick up a it's wizard and it feel yeah. different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because then you understand a lot more of like, well, this is why I thought their plastic was inconsistent just because they didn't know what they were doing. But it's because of these reasons now. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, it makes more sense. Like, yeah, you sure. understand the reason behind it and then you get behind that. But if, if, out of nowhere, Gateway is a perfect example. If yeah. House of Discs were to like take over Gateway, yeah, right. And step one, they made everything perfectly consistent, no flashing. If you bought Hyper Diamond, it was the exact same every time. It's now made mm-hmm. on robots, and David's gone. It's I'm only going to be it's going to be five to seven years <laughs> until Gateway yeah. is gone. Yeah, because people right. because that's not the, the, the charm of Gateway is not like the charm of gateway is not this buttoned up perfect brand Mm -hmm. that's not why people throw gateway so gateway is probably the best example in this of like if you remove the gateway essence of gateway then all that's left is then it falls apart yeah yeah and that's 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 one of the things that could happen with the corporatization of disc golf trying to win the battle of making the best discs is like a losing battle because again a disc can only be like so good too yeah like you can only undercut a disc so much and a disc can only like a frisbee can only be such a good frisbee what? And, and so like I, you're better off with your brand yeah make the best disc that you can but you also have to make like a certain feeling and a yeah. certain oh, absolutely. like like well the, the, yeah. thing, the thing about the plastic industry a lot of people don't realize is right now at this moment the disc golf companies out there are using quite literally the highest quality plastic available to them the mm-hmm. difference you feel in plastic comes down to the processing of that plastic, the blending of the plastic. But like the plastic, the grade plastic they use is like as high as you really can get um, without being like in the medical realm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's it's a very interesting uh, industry. Yeah, it'll be interesting to keep up with where disc golf goes. But um, it's time to jump into the fan favorite segment of Trevor's Trivia. Before we get in there, big announcement. Super excited announcement. Big. We are stoked to announce that Foundation Care is now included on all disc purchases at foundationdisc.com. So if you <laughs> want to try a new mold or different plastic, but you're worried you might get stuck with it if you don't like it, worry no more. Foundation Care allows you to try a disc out risk-free for 30 days and just ship it back to us to exchange it for another if it isn't for you. Take it out to a field, take it out to the course, let your buddies use it, whatever. If you decide it doesn't do what you wanted it to do or fill that slot you wanted it, just exchange it for a disc you already know that you love. So nothing special required when you're purchasing. As long as you're in the USA, your purchase is covered from here on out. So head over to foundationdisc.com. Pick up whatever new mold you're feeling. That's it. You don't have out. to purchase it anymore? Nope. It's just on there? It's just included, baby. Is it just for this month? or is No, it just... forever. Permanent. Holy cow. Yep. That's then, awesome. If you So if you buy a disc today and then you want to return it, you don't even have to email us. You just scroll to the bottom of the page. There's a little foundation care form button. You click that, fill the form out, and uh, we'll give you a shipping label. Boom. Boom, bang, bong. That's awesome. Boom, bang, bong. I wish Done. I had that whenever I was just getting into Same. disc golf. Oh Exciting. my gosh. I would have, gosh, I would so have cool. switched out a disc a few times. I can think of a few. Yeah. <laughs> Izzy Wright boys. Hey, Izzy Wright boys. Um, also, while we're, while we're making foundation announcements, okay. this Friday is the grand opening of our new store. It's going to be great. Uh, 5 p.m. Eastern time. First 100 people are going to get a free commemorative Brixton card of the Foundation 001 location, the OG location, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, and also at 12 p.m. that day, there's a Bogey Bro like versus the nation battle type of event going down. You can register for that over at foundationdisc.com. Just search Bogey Bro verse in the... Um, in the top and be you can be a part of that it's $5 to register for that event $5 per hold you're going to play 100% of that goes back to the course that we're playing at um, helping them with whatever they need uh, so if you want to be a part of that you a can be in a foundation though. video and um, that also guarantees your spot in line as far as the Brixton card goes so if you show up to the foundation nation event and a line does happen to form out front not expecting it but it could happen um, then you don't have to worry about that so we just every time we do one of these, we just build another awful triple Mando, just the harshest <laughs> Mando you've ever seen. And, and well, no, every time that we do one of these, we just add to the triple Mando that already exists. <laughs> it just gets no. longer down. Okay. All the money that you give will go to hanging more baskets. That's right. All the baskets, more will be hanging hung. baskets. <laughs> um. All right, I got a pretty fun thing here because I'm I, in, I'm in for fun. I stumbled today. on a. Uh, <laughs> just I'm down today. for fun today. Just today. Just today. <laughs> I studied, stumbled on a Reddit post from Try Discs. You know that website that does like the yeah. thing. Um, and they have, like, their database of they have all the molds in their database. So okay, <laughs> not an ad read. <laughs> um, so 
the uh, they have a list of each manufacturer and how many molds they have. Wow, which is pretty fun. So basically, the way we're gonna play this game is active molds are like all time in their database, it, it, including out of production molds. It says. <sighs> um, so the way we're gonna play this is you guys are each gonna get five picks. Whoever gets the most number of molds wins. Um, we're gonna disqualify Innova because it has twice as many just about as the wow. next down. So Innova has 151 molds, and that is like twice as many as second place. So after that, it gets it gets pretty relatively close. There's some that are bigger than others, though. Mm. Um, obviously, um, anything in the House of Discs or Trilogy or MVP ecosystems, they're all separated separate. out. Well, like is Axiom Streamline MVP three separate ones? Correct. Correct. It's all separated out like that. Um, I'm stressed. He he gave me like he gave like the the total for those and then also separated them out, which is really cool. So um, okay, we'll we'll to we'll to uh, what we'll do you do we pick get a five number. picks? Like you're gonna go back and forth, draft five manufacturers, and we're gonna add up the total amount of molds between those. It's a lot of manufacturers. Ten total. Well, they have <laughs> they have just about any one you could think of. So Black you, Zombie, uh, <laughs> Trash Panda. <laughs> <laughs> They're on here. Well, Sorry. yeah, just Trash Panda will get you two molds. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Actually, I think yeah, you're right. Um, okay, I'm, I have a number behind my back, Hunter. What do you think it is? Three. Connor. Two. It was six. Ha -ha. That's not fair. Hunter cheated. Well, well I just knew if I go three, I'm one above Connor. So um, you knew good. I was going to pick two. Of course, you read you. It's okay. tattooed. We, on, it's tattooed. So do you want to go first? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Give me first. Okay. Yeah. Let's of course first. you went first. Yeah. Why not? I well, I will say this: first. the best one on the board. Like there are a give couple that are pretty close to it. So. Discraft. Discraft is the highest available. <laughs> Nuts. Discraft has 81 molds. Yeah, baby. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Innova for reference at 151 molds. Hmm. I really want to go in the trilogy realm, but I don't know which one. Because like I kind of want to say dynamic, but also like I don't. I also latitude is sneaky. I'm gonna go latitude 64. Good, good pick. One, yeah. Good pick. Latitude. Thank you. Has 71. Okay. As pro is. Uh, never mind. One I'm of the higher thing. ones up there. It's a good one. Ooh, may I ask a question? Sure. I won't answer it if I think it's unfair, but you can ask it. Well, you know what? I'm going to just take him. I'm going to just okay. take him. Give me Discmania. Discmania is on there with 59 molds. Because I'm thinking, like, does the PD2 get approved twice because it's two different molds? Mm. But I, I already guessed it, so I'm, I locked in. I'm going Gateway. I feel like Gateway could have that a lot. That was a good one. I was thinking about Gateway that. has 37 molds. Oh, wow. really? Dang. I feel... I feel like I'm constantly hearing about molds that I didn't know That one surprised me a little bit. I think that was that a That surprised pick. me a lot. I feel like that's just a lie. I feel like it's just a lie. <laughs> Big hunt. There's no way you go... There's no way they only have 37 molds. Think about it, though, like well, there is a way. I think there is a way. It's truth. It's truth, yeah. But it didn't I don't feel think like they that. have a ton of... Like, once you get yeah. past the putters, like, I don't know that they have that Now many. that I think about it, I could probably name every one if of them. I have, like, four they, distance drivers. Yeah. Big hunt. Still some big ones on the board. Uh, just give me dynamic discs. Dynamic has forty six. Okay. West side, please. I don't think they have that. Many. I don't know. That was either. interesting. Yeah, they're kind of tiny, right? Thirty four for West side. Uh, I'll take Prodigy, please. Mm. Prodigy there feels the, low. There was the other monster. It really? 72. Prodigy feels low. Oh, because they have Ace Line. And they've they got have, the V2s. And, yeah. Uh, how many more do we have? Uh, you have two picks. Hunter has one. You, there's really one on the board that, you, that somebody's got to grab. MVP, there, there, there was that was uh, I think the, that was the highest one still available at forty six. Hunter's last pick. <laughs> you know what? Give me DGA. DGA has twenty nine. Ah, so something. I'm just trying to beat twenty nine right now in my head. That's where my heart's at. Some of these are fascinating. Like some of these. Companies. I feel like Lone Star could be sneaky. But Could they be. haven't existed for a very long time, though. Could be sneaky, though. Take it, coward. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go... Take sacred discs. I'm going to go with... Yeah, I I just want to know... I'll go, I'll go Lone Star for funsies. Lone Star was sneaky. 
36 more. Wow. Heck yeah. They were the highest one left on the board. That was yes. Crazy. That was a really good I didn't pick. think it was going to be more than 20. I don't think it's going to be enough I don't think just because Hunt got that, that I had 81 some bad and the 72. Well, I said West Side. That kind of killed me. Yeah, um, that was an interesting choice. Yeah, I, I, I hit but the brakes hard. Especially with dynamics. What was, the, guy, what was the guy's name? The, no, I'm not going to say it. Nope. Come on, man. No. What? <laughs> what guy's name? The college disc golf guy. Oh, that's that we that's Jason. 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 I was refusing so that Connor couldn't get that joke. Hey, I'm giving him more motivation. Uh, okay. Connor had <laughs> 224. Well, actually, Hunter Benjamin Zorned that one because he won. That's true. That's true. I'm just going to use that name for everything. <laughs> I Zorned it. <laughs> Took it down. You Zorned it. Six. Brought okay. home the win. I, I Zorned it. Hunter, yeah. Hunter, you Zorned Hunter that wins. Hunter. Hunter had like 300, I think. Hunter, you Zorned that. Yes. Good job. No, Trevor, ones. that was a fun game. Fascinating other ones on this list. Yeah, I would love to hear that. Um, so I'll go to, you guys got most of the top ones. The the leader is if you go house all of the house of disc molds, which is two hundred and twenty nine. Yeah, they wow. now have. Um, but past you guys got all the top ones. Yikun comes in at thirty one. Oh, Millennium sneaky. at twenty eight. Axiom at twenty eight. Daredevil at twenty five. Legacy at twenty five. Oh, well, Legacy. Um, Daredevil is twenty five. That's Flash has twenty two. Vibram with nineteen. Cassaplast only has nineteen, which is kind of interesting. Hmm. Um. Trying to see if there's any other surprising ones down here. Streamline only has ten molds. Yeah, I was this, not going to do streamline to this day, which is kind of interesting. How many did you say Axiom had? I think there were twenty nine. Twenty nine. Um, I thought about them, but they scared me. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that too. Pretty interesting stuff. Uh, not going to talk about this too too much because I didn't get a chance to fully watch the coverage. This uh, this course looked phenomenal though. Per Persimmon Ridge. Um, out I've in Arkansas. I've heard of it. So this eighth year just went down out there, and it was pretty well attended, to be honest with you, which is why I wanted to at least bring it up. Jeremy Coling took it down. I think he said it was his first eight-year win in six years. I think How he many said. years have you played, though? I don't know. That's the question. Uh, but he won by two over Drew Gibson. It was also, he said, his first chase card victory. He won off the chase card. Oh, that's pretty oh, sick. Oh, cool. But oh, man. Raven Newsom came in third, and they, all three of them beat Nicholas Antela. Hey. Which is kind of crazy. Vino Makala was also in the field. This is what we always said about Nicholas, though. This is why we get we get all excited about Nicholas, and then we kind of talk about, like, yeah, but he can be a little streaky. Like, if you're Nicholas and you're, like, a dominant guy, you don't go out to that and take fourth. No, you shouldn't. Uh, and then on FBO, you had Christian Tatar win. Why was she there? I don't know. But who else was there? Christian's kryptonite owns Goggins. She that beat is, her by five. I say that is the interesting thing. Is Now, they were 12 strokes ahead of the field, but... Yeah, seventeen under for Kristen, twelve under for Own, and then Maria Oliva came in third. I'm going to say that that's actually a, like the biggest takeaway from this. Like the men's side, hey, good for Big Germ, but like that's just kind of the, a fun event for them. That's probably pretty important for Kristen to beat Own. Obviously, the rest of the field is what is what it was, but the fact that she was able to go out there and beat her pretty convincingly. Uh, that could be good momentum for her. It'll she, also be interesting. Sometimes when you haven't won in a while, you just need to see yourself win. She and by a while I mean like a month because she did win earlier this year. Rating wise, I think the update will be next week, if I'm not mistaken. Either oh, tomorrow no or next she, week. There's no way she gets it. I don't know, because she just went nine ninety seven, ten thirty six, nine eighty six. So she, I don't know if this will be in before the update. She's having but, some bad events though. She did, but I, you don't know what's dropping. It'll be interesting. She's at nine ninety nine. She just needs that one point. So I think she's gonna go to nine ninety eight. Before we go Ooh. to our top ten, Ooh. I thought this would be fun. Trenton Corn tagged us in this on Twitter, and he said disc golf stores and their comparisons to NBA thread NBA players a thread. I like briefly looked over this, but I wanted to like really dig into. Yeah, it so again. I just thought it'd be fun. Just our reaction, just hear what hear what <gasps> we say. So first one he compared is Paul McBeth. He gives a reason, so I'm gonna read yeah. his reason for all. I think we should like see if first say do we agree with the reasoning, and then is there a better comp? Okay. Paul McBeth to LeBron James. Yeah. The goat of our sport with the highest IQ in the game, showing signs of slowing down, but can he still pick up his superhero cape at the biggest moment? I agree with the reasoning, but LeBron's not the goat, so he had to go Paul McBeth to LeBron to Michael Jordan would be the actual. Well, you top know what's there. funny is now if we go active players, that's fine. Here's what's actually interesting is but I don't know if this is an active it is active list. So I'm okay with it actually. Active list, LeBron's fine. Um yeah, the only I would say Yeah. The the difference is, I mean, you can't compare their age directly. If you take them at face value, what they are now, though, I think LeBron is is still better in the NBA. Yes, comparatively to what Paul is doing right now. But Paul's a little Paul's in a weird spot right now. He's a little bit hurt. He did just win worlds not that long ago. Same with LeBron, just won an NBA title, um, not that long ago. So yeah, I, I do think that he's realistically yes, this comp makes sense. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna overthink that comp because it's one of the least complex ones. So I'm just, next up we have Calvin. This one's interesting. Calvin Heinberg to Jason Tatum, one of the elite of the elite and most consistent players in the game, has has shown to constantly pull himself in championship 
contention, but is yet to get over the hump. With still plenty of time left in his career, it's only a matter of time. So here's the thing with when you're talking about a team sport versus an individual sport, um, and you're talking about the NBA where it's so hard to beat the super teams, there's a lot of players you could put in this category. You could also put him, uh, compare him to Luka Doncic, who is another guy who's like insane but hasn't won the big one yet. I think actually Tatum's better because like he's been to a finals. Like he's he's like had pretty good success. I actually really like this comp. I like the comp more so because I feel like I see Luka Doncic more. I feel like Luka is like a like I feel like Calvin You see Calvin all over the place. But I feel like Calvin like Luka I feel like has more personality than Jason Tatum. And I feel like Calvin Probably. Heinberg would go well, more with the lease of the two. Definitely yeah. I so I I I agreed with this one. I thought this one was good. Um, I actually, to be honest with you, I didn't really have much qualms with any of this them. Let's one, keep going. This one I disagree with, I think. Eagle McMahon to Paul George. At one point in time when he was younger, was considered to be next up when it comes to being the best in the game. We'll always wonder what if he didn't get hurt. Older now, but still great. Can he get back to that level? My opinion, if we're going non-active players, this I actually might still be active. I don't know. Eagle McMahon is Derrick Rose. Yeah. Okay. Came up MVP looked like I mean he might be the greatest player of all time. I would Injury say, yeah, question mark. I would, I would say career. the biggest issue is we haven't really gotten post injury Eagle McMahon yet at a full serving. Like I don't a year from now if, he could be playing at 100 percent and his little injury blip on his radar would be very small for yeah. his career. I would say he could also be compared to Tatum because Tatum got to the league really young was supposed to be like the next great thing and it just took him longer than people maybe expected to get his footing i think that's what eagle mcmahon is is he got in really early it just took him longer than people expected to win um and like he that's the thing is like i don't i don't believe paul george has any rings and Eagle mcmahon won the european open he won kono peach day fake major but it's a mickey mouse ring um, major's a major, but I'm just saying. Like I, I don't think, think Paul I think has rings. I think that comp's a little off. He definitely didn't win with the Pacers. He hasn't won with the Clippers, and he didn't win the Thunder. So no, I can tell you, he, had, he doesn't have one. Not won any championships in his career. Yeah, so I think that comp's a little bit off because Eagle McMahon. I think they're doing. He's also not made the NBA Finals. Yeah, I think they're doing Eagle McMahon a disservice actually with that comp. Well, no, I agree. I think that this comp's all based on Eagle doesn't come back fully, which I think yeah, if he, he doesn't come but back, he already if, won. Paul 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 George, he he didn't win. He never won. Eagle McMahon has won at the at the highest level. That's why, I, to me, if he doesn't come back, then Derrick Rose, which he didn't. He won an MVP, but he, didn't he won, won an MVP title. at least. It's true. Yeah, I feel like if, if Eagle doesn't come back, Derrick Rose. But if he, but Derrick Rose also went out. He got that injury really early in his career. Eagle, correct. Eagle McMahon's been around for a little bit. Maybe Clay Thompson. It's a tough one. Eagle McMahon, Clay Thompson comp. I don't know. I have to think about. It. I when I saw it, it just didn't feel. If right. he comes back, if he comes back, this comp's awful. Com- comment down below if what, he comes what, back. What your good Eagle McMahon comp. If is. he comes back at 100, percent then Paul George isn't good enough to be compared to Eagle McMahon. Paul George hasn't really been in the right situation. wasn't good enough to carry a team. Never got on the right super team. Simon Lazat compared to Damian Lillard. That's another interesting one. One of the most beloved players in the sports in the sport, thanks to his personality and jaw dropping shots. Been loyal for years, but recently went to a new team. Now that he's older, will he ever be a champion? I found that one interesting too. Is like, what do you define as champion? Simon has won a lot. On tour, in the last I think few this years. guy's just using majors to NBA championship. Yeah, I think that, that's what and that's fair. And in that case, the Dame thing, I, I mean, he's he's cherry picking a little bit, but you have to do that with these comps. I know they're not like. Um, I think this one's fine because, like, yeah, he moves later in his career. Will he win? Will he win that world title or that major title before his career is up? That's fair enough. Well, also, Damian Lillard isn't he like a dirty rapper? They he both is. have like a successful career outside of. Oh, I like that. The there game. you go, Hunter. Stretch it a little. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Next up, we have Anthony Barella to Zion Williamson. This one's also kind of whack. We've known about him for years and knew he had all the tools to be great. It took him a while, but it finally looks like he's broken out this season after many tries. Yeah, I don't like this one fully. Yeah, I mean Zion Williamson's <laughs> not to be mean guy, but he most of his career struggle so far has been because he can't control his weight. Well, can't control so. his weight, and he came into the league so athletic for his size that like he was just destined to be hurt yeah like there's he's, just no he's way around this it. year though i would um actually you know what i remember now that the last one or um this one yeah like is whatever the next one's good the last comp is one that was really bad okay next one's ganon bird of victor Wimbanyama. this one's perfect a young tall lanky prospect who everyone can tell is clearly the future of the sport doesn't know what he doesn't know quite yet but he's got the chance to have a legendary career love it makes sense good comp 
Ricky Wysocki to Kevin oh, Durant. In his prime, was in a close battle to be considered the best player in the sport. Although he switched teams a few times, he's still known to be the very best when he's on. Can he get back to being a championship player? I like player? that one. Kind of second fiddle to LeBron, like he was kind of second fiddle to Paul. But then there was a couple years where he kind of took over a little bit. Now, Kevin Durant had the help of Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, but we'll talk about that. Well, I think it's good because... Again, Kevin Durant, I feel like, gets robbed off of a lot of lists. Like, he's one of the greatest scorers of all time. Yeah. Which I think is similar to Ricky, where Ricky just gets outshone by other people. Yeah. In the same time. That's a good comp. Um, James Conrad to Zach Levine. This one's kind of weird. Talented player, don't get me wrong, but is largely remembered for one amazing moment he gave his fan in his career that broke social media. I get it. I get it. Because the holy shot compared to Zach Levine's Z- dunk contest. Zach Levine, yeah. That's all. That's it. I want, That might be a disservice to Zach Levine, who's still a pretty good player in the league, to my knowledge. But did Zach Levine ever win a championship? James Conrad did. Yeah. Once again, the whole championship thing gets a little fuzzy. You can't win in the NBA unless you've got a super team. Yeah. It's an, I, I, I get this, though. It's like, yeah, no, I only know his rationale is correct. Like, yeah. yes, the the whole like one moment is going to like really stand out. Yeah. And there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of guys in the league probably that have like a one moment thing. Aaron Gordon. Aaron cause Gordon. Because he, he won the, like the dunk contest guys fit that bill a decent bit. Yeah. This good. last one was trash. Next, we have Brody Smith to LaMelo Ball. This is terrible. A largely polarizing social media figure who quickly became good at the sport sh- shortly after being introduced to it, has his fans and his fair share of critics as well hasn't quite panned out as how many expected at the highest that doesn't level mean, he is a lamella ball is literally an all-star quality guard like he's one of the best guards and he's had some injury issues but like he has panned out he's been when he's not hurt he's been really good he's on an awful team he's on like one of the worst or he's one of the worst organizations in the league so that's why that, that, that yeah i don't good. really know if there's a great brody smith comp no you would need a guy who decided to pick up basketball later in life <laughs> yeah that like which doesn't happen that had a bunch of there like, is no comp to Brady Smith's career in a major professional sport probably it would be like if LeVar Ball got into the NBA well actually no there probably is there anybody who has ever is there Ooh, Michael Jordan to baseball <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's actually it no there that's actually it yeah well, Michael Jordan went to baseball <laughs> he's gonna kill us for that one no because bro, we're calling we're comparing Brody Smith to Michael Jordan that's true on the scheme of NBA players that's true he's a LeBron guy I think Ooh, maybe I'm gonna get killed for saying that. I don't, I don't remember. Know. And Space Jam is like Bro Five. Now that now there that it is. is. <laughs> now that, that's and something. now we're done. <laughs> <laughs> which one of us? Which that's one? it. That's all I have to say. I'm during glad this you segment. upped us. That's good. <laughs> all right, now what you're all here for? Okay, we got to fix our top ten. Right now, we have Gannon Burr, 1, Anthony Barella, 2, Nicholas Antela, 3, Kyle Klein, 4, Ricky, 5, Matty 6, Aaron Gooseman, Gossage, 7, Calvin like Heinberg, 8, Cole Rodallin, 9, things. Ezra Robinson, 10. I just get a headache every time. Let's just start with the DGPT standings. Shall we start there? And just see, like, how far off are we from that? How do I get to the standings? Standings, okay. All right, so right now, first off, I think A.B. needs to be one, not Gannon, because he has a second win now. I think we're all good there. Flip A.B. Yeah. and Gannon. They're definitely one, two. Yeah. And I think that it's gonna it be goes like A.B., one, yeah. Gannon, two. Very I think we're good there. Back. One, two is fine. Okay. The third in the Pro Tour standings is actually Kyle Klein. So let's actually go Stat Mando. He, he, head to head. Kyle who, Klein. Who are you going to compare him to? Nicholas Antelo. Oh, okay. I was like, surely not getting her. <laughs> Sir. Okay, let me get this to be in our range here. Let's find our range. Let him cook, which is basically the whole beginning of the season. And then Kyle Klein's 9-7 and seven against Nick Loss. They've played against each other that many times. How's that possible? How's that possible? What did you I went to last year. Okay. I went to last year. I was like, that can't be right. Don't worry, guys. 2024 update. Now they're 2-2 two and two against each other, but Nick Loss has a win. Yeah. Although Kyle Klein's 100% inside the top 10, Nick Loss is only 75 finishing in 67th at texas states yeah that just that was the most recent event right yeah yes. so i think so we get a bump we get a sw- flip-flops flip-flops i think we got to put kyle above him i mean yeah. i know nicholas had a win but you can't show up in 67 no. nicholas i uh, hurt you in the power rankings and then he just took fourth at an eighth tier, which you know it's in the back of my head okay now i mean should we question if ricky jumps him yeah let's look at it let's just take a look you got to see this is how you do it you know if somebody starts falling down the ladder you got to keep looking until they stop Ricky is two and one against Nicholas. And what has he done recently? But again, Nicholas has a win. Ricky wasn't at the event; he had a win. 
Um, Ricky came in 17th at Texas State, though. Mm, let's just hold it there. I think, I think we're okay there. One, if Ricky there. gets a win, then we can start talking. All right, next up down this list, we had Luke Humphreys is fifth on the Pro Tour list, first off. Let's just, just throw that out there. I don't know if we should, took a second. Should we let's just compare and let's, let's compare him to Ricky? Yeah, well, Luke Humphreys. That might not be fair. Might have to compare. He's not on the list. Probably have to compare him. Okay, to Ricky's two and one to Luke. Well, yeah, he's gonna be. Let's compare him to Matty O. He's gonna have a win against people because he took that second place. Matty O's three and one against him. So yeah, I don't. So let's go. Let's just compare Luke, Luke Humphreys to Ezra Robinson. Yeah, that, that actually could be a decent comp because Ezra Robinson hasn't had like a crazy start. I don't think that could be a good comp. Two and two against each other. Luke Humphreys has a second place. Luke Humphreys went twenty second, 29th, second, fourteenth. Ezra's went twentieth, twelfth, seventh, sixteenth. I think Ezra, I think Ezra is a better second place yeah. or a better uh, top ten. I think he holds that spot. Okay, uh, Matteo. We need to compare Matteo to Ricky though. And take a look at that here. Orum. Things haven't changed Matthew, a ton since we started this. Wysocki. This season. It's been pretty, been Richard. pretty consistent. We went okay. to, to look at that Joseph Anderson. Okay, they're that. two and two against each other. Ricky has one second place, though. Ricky's went 17th, 10th, 2nd, 10th. Matteo's went 4th, 45th, 6th, 8th. So I think Ricky should be ahead of him. Yeah, probably. Um, Which he is. Boom. Gossage is interesting, too. And I think Calvin is so going to be probably. Aaron Gossage. He, he had a bad start after the first 14th. event, I think. He's went third, 42nd, 16th, 22nd. Yeah, he's been a little shaky since the first event. So let's just compare him, um, Aaron the Goose Man Gossage against Calvin Heimberg. Yeah, look at Radon, too. Some of these, yeah, some of these people toward at the end we got to really look at. Versus Heimberg. Because Heimberg, after the first event, has been good. They're 2-2 two and two against each other, but one of those is a win, which is uh, All-Star Weekend. Doesn't count. Heimberg's so, been good the last couple Heimberg's weeks. Heimberg's went 34th, 3rd, 5th. Gossage went 3rd, 16th, 27th. So Heimberg's getting better. Gossage is getting worse. Yeah. Heimberg's got to move I say, up. I think, he, I think Heimberg needs to move just below Matty O. I think that's where he's sitting right now, which is crazy to say. But Okay, so now let's look at Ga- Gooseman to Cole Rodallin. Is, is there anybody on the uh, Pro Tour standings that we should be trying to flirt into this top 10 still that we haven't hit? Mason, Mason Ford, Ford, Adam Hammes, Gavin Rathbun. Okay. There's a few more names then. Okay. So let's look at Cole Rodallin versus Aaron Gossage. Two and two against each other. Again, nice one of them has two. the Pro All-Star weekend though. But again, Rodallin's getting better. better. Gossage is getting worse. Yeah. I like Rodallin over him. Okay. If, I'm, if you're okay with that, I'm yeah. okay with that. Okay. Okay. Um, and then I guess we need to go Ezra to Gossage. Yeah. Ezra Robinson, that is. Then we can try to put people in the tent. All right. Ezra is 3-1 and one against Gooseman. Wow. Should we... Yeah, bump them up then. I think we've got to. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll start comparing people to Gossage at the tent spot and see if he even holds there, you know? Okay. Just the way we roll. So now let's look at Mason Ford versus Aaron Gossage. Mason's been having a pretty good season. He has. Mason Ford is two and one against yeah. the Goose Man. He might jump him. Forty seventh at chess, but then went fourth, sixteenth, oh, yeah. seventh. Uh, he jumps him. Um, all right. Mason Ford is now maybe his first time in the power rankings. Congratulations. I think so. Welcome Mason Ford. I think it is. Let's compare Mason Ford to Ezra Robinson. Let's see how far up we go here. He's been he's been on heater right now. Mason Ford, they're two and two against each other. Um, but Mason Ford is fifty percent in the top ten. They're really close. You could probably. I think we got to go to Mason. I say you probably could bump because if you go to Chess is where it gets confusing. But since Chess, it's went fourth, sixteenth, seventh for Mason versus seventh, twelfth, twentieth. So I think Mason Ford needs to go up to ninth here. I'm down. Um, um, all right, should we Ford. check? Let's just look at. Let's look at Mason versus Cole Rodallin. Let's see how far up he's going. Cole Rodallin compared to Mason Ford, we now have Cole beats him out. Okay. Okay, so here we're we good go. there. The buck stops there. here. The Ford um, stops here. Mason, we also need to compare Adam Hammes to now Ezra Robinson. Adam Hammes to... Whoops. He hasn't had any super high finishes, but I might be wrong. Ezra Robinson, Ezra beats him out. Okay. So I think we're good right. here. All I think right. we're good here. So we're the new the m- top 10 is Air- top Anthony 10. Barella first, Gannon Burr second, Kyle Klein third, Nicholas fourth. Ricky fifth, Matteo sixth, Calvin Heimberg seventh, Cole Rodallin eighth, Mason Ford ninth, Ezra Robinson tenth. If you could, what a sh- top ten. If you could show me that two years ago when our top ten still looked like Paul, Ricky, Eagle, Chris Dickerson, like that was what things well, looked here, like. Our, our, I would, I'd be like, you're out of your mind. Going into the season, our end of year prediction was Gannon one, Calvin two, Isaac three, 
Eagle 4, Ricky 5, Ezra Robinson 6, Kyle Klein 7, Simon Lazat 8, Matteo 9, AB 10. So pretty good list, which just Simon and I- Isaac have both stunk so far this year. Yeah. But if there's two- Eagle, we don't know where Eagle's going to go. Yeah, well, right now he's a ghost. And I guess this must have been the list coming into the year is the one below it. I don't know. I have two lists down there. Did I don't know which one. Well, we probably Maybe both, we both, made. No, we, we probably we, both made one. We both did. I don't know who's is who's. Well, mine probably has AB higher. Yeah. At eighth? Probably. So you have Ricky one. All right. Anyways, now FPO, Kristen one, own two, Evelina three, Missy four, Holland five. This is a whole mess right here. Let's look at the Pro Tour standings first. I think Kristen could get dethroned here. In FPO, we have Missy Gannon is leading points wise. Um, and, and then you have Owen, recently. and then you have Evelina, and then you have Kristen. Missy has to, is, yeah. I'm, oh my gosh, dude, this is gonna be okay. Gross. Well, let's go. Let's go to. Let's jump over to FPO. <laughs> this is gonna be. And just let's gross. just let's just start with Owen Scoggins versus Kristen Tatar. Okay, I think Missy is probably gonna be the case, the best case though. Well, but then we'll compare Missy to. We gotta just go. Who's next to each other? Owen Scoggins. They're two and two against each other. Um, such small numbers. This is tight. Owens Goggins hasn't finished outside the top four. Kristen went one, you two, gotta six, give two. A, you got to give it just to Scoggins, I think, just because her win came a week sooner than Kristen's has now, and just the way. Well, then you have that A tier thing that happened. But did we factor that in? No, they did play each other head to head. It's just the. I mean, they're so close. Even I, with the fourth to six is only three strokes separating them. I think we just, I think we bump Kristen. <sighs> I think we just do it because we can. It's been so long. Okay. Now let's go. Evelina to Kristen. Evelina to Kristen. Or do Missy to Kristen. Let's actually. just go Missy to Kristen because yeah, Missy's going to jump Evelina. That's going to be the interesting one. Kristen's three and one okay. against her. Okay. Yeah, because Missy went ninth, third, first, fourth. I mean, no. <laughs> but Chris, to <laughs> Kristen's three, better. Kristen's well, better. The last three weeks, though, it's. The last three weeks, but it's been real close. But how <laughs> tight are we making this? I don't know. I it's, think we're fine there. So let's go Missy to Evelina. Surely Missy's going to be in third, though. I mean, she just won two weeks ago. Missy did win a major. It's also true. That Yeah. You might have to slide Missy over. Okay, Chris. well, Missy definitely jumps Evelina. She's three and two against her. Missy Gannon, welcome to at least third place for now. Okay. Let's go Missy to own. Let's go Missy to own. How about that? Let's see. Let's just see here. Three and three against each other. Um. So we've got Missy goes fourth, third, ninth, third, first, fourth. Own goes ninth. Oh no, the, that first line is wrong. So third, ninth, third, first, four, fourth, seventh, second, first, fourth, third. I think these are all so close. It's not even going to matter so that much. Neck. Should we just have a three-way tie for first between yes, Owen, Kristen? Good idea. Good Owen, idea. Kristen, and Missy are all tied for first. That's a good idea. I like that. Three people tied for first, and then a fourth and a fifth. That's a good idea, Hunt. It's like it's like in cars when they all tie for the Piston Cup. That's what this next event. That's what Jonesboro is going to be. It's the it's the Piston it's Cup. It's there in California. And, that's a really good analogy. And they're trying ever. to schmooze Dinoco. I think that helped all of us understand the situation much better. Okay. Yeah, no, I would, yeah, I would say so. Come on, Hunt. Don't worry I'm about just the format. Struggling Don't with worry it. about the format. Don't worry about the format. Okay, and then we have fourth place. Now we just need to figure out fourth and fifth. Well, let's look at the standings again and see who potentially deserves those spots. Um, Evelina. So I think Evelina and Holland. We have the same top okay, five. Okay, let's keep it. So I think we're fine. We're good. We're good. So new FPO top five <laughs> is Owen, Kristen, Missy all tied for first. <laughs> Evelina in fourth, Holland in fifth. And That's the crazy thing is That's a new one that feels right. Yeah. No, it does feel right. Silas? It's him. What's Silas? up? Silas. Why are you yelling his name? We don't have a Silas Alex. Oh, we're not gonna be able to get one. I was gonna we're have never... him just type a mold out on his phone. That's uh, not the same. We gotta cancel the No, next it's week. okay. It has to ha- when it happens, it has to happen. The you're right. right way. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. That would be that would be, that'd be, that'd that'd be, be such it would a would just be so, It'd be anti You're right. You're right. You're right. Okay, no Silas Select. I would hate week. to win that way. No yeah. Silas Select. I would hate it. That wraps I'll it up throw for this up week. Everywhere. Don't forget, if you are anywhere close to the Lynchburg area, and come I mean check out anywhere. Come check out our new storefront location this Friday, Connor 5 p.m. Eastern time. Personally. Um <laughs> and 
You can also <laughs> register for the event at 12 p.m. If you want to be in a foundation video, be on you, the main channel. You want to get crushed by the bogey buds. Yeah, y'all aren't going to win, but you can show up. <laughs> can we be the bogey buds? We, we should have We should have made that our April Fool's that we changed our team name. From bogey bros to the bogey brogy, buds? The, the, brogy, the brogey buds. <laughs> the bogey <What>? buds. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, if you want to see the new storefront, we're moving all this week, so it's going to be super exciting. Heck of tall seasons. Um, also, if you're watching this right now, there's a very solid chance that Trevor is still putting. Uh, yeah, stream. if you're still if you're still on Monday, then yes, I'm still putting. I might make it to Tuesday. Trevor thinks it's taking him a long time. Connor and I are gonna be out of here by like two thirty. Yeah, it's only gonna take us like twenty minutes. You guys are gonna be out here by like one fifteen. Honestly, Connor, do you just want to throw a thousand putts? I'll rebound for you, then I'll throw my thousand. You're about. Remember, yeah, you're gonna throw about four thousand putts. You think I'm making only twenty five percent of my thirty footers? I'm talking to Connor. You might make thirty. Whoa, you know, Trevor. Red, the heck? He I, you. I think I'm going to make about 20% of mine, to be clear. Well, Connor's way better putter than you. True. True. 30-footer <laughs> on the line. 30-footer on the line. Connor and I trying to compare our putting is like trying to compare a bucket of sludge to a bucket of garbage. 30-footer. <laughs> 30 dibs footer, on sludge. Dibs on sludge. 30-footer with your no, life. No, I'm the sludge. With your life on the line, your two options are you putt it yourself or you have the other one of you two putt it. <laughs> oh, me. Of course. Because I'd rather have my own Connor? life in my hands. <laughs> Because I, I wouldn't want Connor to have to live with that. Okay, no, no. My life's on my life's on the line. Oh no. If one of oh, you Trevor, two has to I'm throw having, the putt and y'all have to decide between I'm having Trevor. We're not making it, it actually, sure. we're not having an actual decision being made. We're gonna we're gonna put like a piece of paper. Okay, but no, Trevor, Trevor's for this stake, you're making an Trevor's actual decision. It. Trevor's made more pressure putts in his life than I have. Think about all the bogey bro battles. There you go. All right. So Trevor makes more putts. And than thirty Connor. feet inside the circle. I don't want to think about this. It makes me sad. But Hunter is dead. <laughs> yeah, all I'm thinking about is hearing a clang and then a bang, <laughs> and that's Hunter's head. Uh, Thirty footer life on the line. Anyone in foundation? We're all picking Clayton. Oh, of course. Of course. I was just, no, I'm picking Brody. Dude. But I'm, I'm picking <laughs> because then Brody's gonna he'll he'll take care of my kids, man. Brody, Brody, like <laughs> Brody, will line up like this, be like. Scoober. <laughs> yeah. I'm picking like, oh, darn just to be clear, I, I am <laughs> <laughs> I am picking Clayton oh. pre Zuka Cart. Hey, oh, 30 know. footer, you getting shot in the head. Not dark horse. <laughs> Should I go left to Scoober? Should I? <laughs> I am picking Let's see what the chat says. I am also but for real though, I'm picking pre Zuka Cart Clayton. That not is post true. We yeah. can't no joke. I might be made. taking post Zuka Cart Kyle. Honestly, maybe. Alright, we'll see you next week. <laughs> Kyle's got that swagger.